All right, in this video, we are talking about the Neve 5057 Orbit summing mixer. Um, full disclosure, it sounds all messed up and weird because of OBS streaming and the way I have stuff routed. Who cares? The whole point is to see and learn how to route your mixes out of Ableton and into the summing mixer, back out into the Apollo and printing it to now master it. Um, like I said, I'm aware the quality is weird, but at the end of the day, you're going to learn something if you don't already know about mix summing. And especially there's not many videos of doing this in Ableton and coming out into this unit, um, if any. Um, so when I first bought it, I was skeptic, but then I got it and I'm like, ooh, I can use this. So I want to share with you guys. I'm toggling between blue silk mode, red silk mode. Um, I started out in blue. Um, the texture's up, so you're definitely getting a little bit more volume, not much at all really, but it's just more of a texture thing and your openness of the mix. But anyways, um, you know, we'll dive into it, but I'm routing everything out external, you know, the 808, the drum track and the guitar all go into different parts of this unit in the back by dbx cables um and then they run through the computer into their separate channels and then come back out of here with only a two track into my input of my apollo which comes back in right here on my print track this one right and then the input is one two so i record what i have done out there then afterwards i have a master chain so in this video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show you what the guitar, the 808, and the drums all together sound like, just going through the box, which is on this master, which I had on. Then I turned that off because we don't need that anymore. And then I ran it all through this print track. And then I toggle what I did with the master on the in the box one, I printed it. So it's resampled. So you can hear how that sounds every time I hit solo right here. When that's soloed, you're hearing in the box. When this is on and this is off, then you're hearing the mix print still running through the same master chain as originally with this. Um, it's honestly a little confusing to me. It took me a second, like, you know, just like a day or two to figure all this out and how to route it and stuff. Maybe maybe a little bit longer. I stayed up a couple, a couple nights afterwards, like thinking, oh, what if I route this this way and that way? And there's not so much you can really do, um, but basically you get four subgroups if they're stereo. And, you know, you can run your drums through here, vocals, synths, and bass or something like that. That's what, how I've been using it and getting wider, more in-depth mixes. Is it really subtle? Yes. Um, it starts making a bigger difference the bigger amount of tracks you have. And the summary is, is when it's blue, it's a little bit more bass heavy. When it's red, it is um, more hi-hats. In, in this particular mix, you can hear the hi-hats better and the, um, the blue, you really get way more 808 depth, probably too much. I would have to turn it down and you'll hear it kind of distorts. Um, I like red even for this hip hop mix. Um, so let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm definitely down to talk about this stuff and I'll go in more detail um, as the times go. All right, so I have my drum track going external out three and four, not one and two because that's where the input of my vocal microphone right now and also the print track after the Neve is going to come into one and two. So I have my drum track going external out three and four, 808 and bass, external out five and six, guitar slash music, external out seven and eight. And again, my print track, let's make that red, is external in one and two. Like I said, we don't do anything in one and two, out one and two, because we need that for reserve for input. Um, so on my print track, you're going to get the Neve printed, then it's going to go to the master chain. On my original master, which is my in the box mix right here, um, not going through the Neve, I had this on to boost the sound quality to be a mastered in the box track. And then I printed it right here with master on. So 
turn that off now because we don't need to double master if it's already going to be mastered coming through here. I printed two settings of the Neve, red silk and blue silk. So you can hear and see kind of the differences. Um, you can see right here that the 808 and hi-hats have a little bit of a different shape. You can see right here that the 808 has a different shape and same right here. Now, I had my 808 a little louder originally, but it was distorting um, once I went through the blue because it adds so much low end. So that's one thing. Um, but here we go in the box. I hear right around here that the hi-hat and guitar starts fading away because the 808 needed room to breathe. Here on the red, red Neve, it's not the case. You can hear everything. And that was before I even changed any of the bass levels so of the 808. So just going instead of out of the um, in the box mix and just going to the Neve with the red setting and the texture up, you can really hear all the instruments doing their own thing. The 808, the hi-hats, the drums, and the guitar. The guitar and drums are just much more present while we didn't lose 808. <laughs> You can totally just hear that and I mean I have the RMS feed so um, on the red right here and then on the in the box um, is right here and let's listen and watch. Yeah, you can really hear all the instruments in this red. Um, the blue now has more bass, but I turned down the bass, so. Even turning down the bass, you can hear the depth come back of the lows of the bass. The red just opens up that high end, the blue just expands that low end, but you don't lose the um, hi-hat or the guitar either. Listen. Down here when I'm playing the in-the-box mix, right here the guitar and the 808 are really fighting each other for space. You could really hear that this is just struggling to, to handle all the information and it's distorting. Um, I'm going to go between the blue and the in the box again. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know. Just let's go red in, in the box again. I like the red. 
Um, but I can also see the blue. Um, they're all just different textures. Sometimes maybe you want a choked rock sound and you want to go through the in the box. Um, I'm not saying it's always better. Um, I personally think it is. Um, and this is just going through the 5057 orbit. This is, you know, they have SSL Sigma. They have API summing units. Um, but in general, I have noticed, especially with bigger pop mixes, um, when I have like 60 drum tracks, 15 bass tracks, um, maybe some synthesizers, some live bass, um, 808s all in this group. Maybe I have my music uh, subgroup with guitars, synthesizers, live instruments, effects, and then I have my vocals, which have probably 100 tracks in them. When all there's like 200 tracks going on and you take four subgroups, you put them out, you know, into the Neve and then back in and you start playing with the mix at that point where you can hear it on the blue setting or the red setting. This 5057 opens up the space to add more and it just sounds like a record before it gets choked up. Um, and you can't you, and the, the, the frequencies are just fighting each other. Um, you just get more depth and space um, because of the electrical current and stuff going through the transistors and all that. So I like it a lot. Um, you guys can hit me up if I have time. I can help you guys with the setup. Um, but yeah, there's not many videos out there for Ableton routing into a summing unit. Um, so... Hopefully this helps somebody. When I first uh, was looking this up, I didn't find much out there. Um, and I didn't know if I wanted to spend $2,000 to get it going. And it's more than $2,000 just to get the 5057. I originally only had an Apollo Twin, which has two inputs. <laughs> um, you know, looking back, it's, it's always a learning curve. But um, I talked to the guy at Vintage King, and he's like, okay, you need a uh, Apollo that has more, um, inputs. You're not gonna, you're not gonna go out just two, you're gonna go out 16, right? So you need, I needed to upgrade to the Apollo X8, which was another X amount of thousand dollars. It was like $2,500 for that. So then I had to get DB25 cables, um, to connect the orbit to the Apollo. So it's a bit of a setup. Um, but you know, I mean, it takes the mixes up to like, you know, that kind of console level where Manny Marquin is um, and all the big guys, Dave Pensado and all that, like when they're really finalizing a big commercial pop record, um, they're doing this. My buddies do this that I came up with at Paramount. Um, it took me a while to get here. Um, I was making beats and just producing for a while, but finalizing mixes and putting out product, this is quite important. Um that doesn't go to say that you can't make like a cool punk record in the box or a you know emo trap record or maybe even a ballad or anything still works in the box it's just about leveling um and sacrificing maybe a little bit of openness and volume um anyways talk to you guys soon